Hey, this is Ian Cleary from Razor Social on our marketing channel. Welcome back. So today I want to talk about podcast software. Not hardware, only software. I want to talk about the different types of software you use if you're creating a podcast. I mean, podcasts are great because, well, most of them are not visual, so you can dress up a wire however you want, whichever way you want. <laughs> Or you can have video podcast if you want to be visual on it as well. But there's a lot of hardware and software involved. As you see in our studio, we have all the mics and stuff like that, which we can use for the podcasting side. But I want to step through just different software you could use for a podcast. Okay, so number one, I suppose managing a podcast. You want to start off by going, well, how can you manage, you know, first of all, scheduling guests. So you could use tools like uh, One Schedule or Calendly. So both of them tools allow you to easily schedule guests and they integrate with the likes of Gmail calendar so that there's no conflicts in your calendar which is great so you can just schedule it back and forth it can be automatically checking your diary and you can confirm times which are with the person you're interviewing so if you are interviewing somebody other thing to use is something like Trello or Asana they are task management tools and they have these boards and on the boards you can create categories so you can say here's a board here's my first category and the first category category is guests I'm going to interview. The next category on the board after that could be, you know, ones that are automatically scheduled. And then when the podcast are recorded, that's another category. And then it's moved off to editing. That's a separate category. Then it's production. Then it's distribution. So you can create all these categories within Trello or Asana and use that to manage your podcasting, all your interviews. Because after a while, it's going to get, you know, you're going to have lots of different interviews. You want to schedule them well. You want to set them up well. You want to manage them well. So they're, they're good tools for doing that. For recording, uh, there is a variety of tools for recording. For example, a simple tool is Ecamm Recorder that you can use within Skype. So typically, if we're doing recording of interviews, we'll use Skype and Ecamm Recorder. It's simple utility. All you do is switch it on and actually Actually, we have it switched on automatically for everything on Skype. So be careful if you ever talk to us on Skype, we have it recorded. We know where you live. <laughs> Honey messing. Yeah, but we do record everything. It's just easier to switch it on. And in Ecamm, there are some settings there where you can change around, where you can say, hey, I want to, you know, record video or I want to record audio. So Ecamm is good. Uh, Pamela is the equivalent on Windows. So Ecamm is a Mac. I don't think it's a Windows version. I think it's only Mac. And Pamela would be the equivalent on a Windows for recording. Now, another very useful tool is Zencaster. If you haven't looked at Zencaster, do look at it. And you get some free time with Zencaster. Zencaster, so you not necessarily have to pay, but what Zencaster does is you record everything to Zencaster and it will actually strip out all the noise automatically. So you'll get high quality sound recording just using Zencaster. Okay, so number three is editing. So once you record it all, you want to do some editing. I use QuickTime for basic editing where I can cut bits of sound out at the start, cut bits at the end, cut bits in the middle. It doesn't do editing of reducing noise or anything, but if you just want to cut stuff out on a Mac, that's a very simple utility to use. Uh, Auphonic, A-U-P-H-O-N-I-C, is a very useful tool for stripping all the noise out and making it high quality. Uh, sound and again they provide a free and a paid version you can have like a few hours free every month so definitely worth doing it if you're a professional or if you want to get into you know more advanced editing there are other tools like for example uh, adobe audition you could use something like that for really advanced editing which is time consuming to edit so uh, you need to have a good editor in place now, once you do all the editing and have it all nicely packaged up and it's ready, what you want to do maybe is do transcription. You might want to create a blog post about it or maybe it's a video interview and you want to have captions on it as well. We use Rev.com. So Rev.com is a great service. They'll charge about a dollar a minute to actually uh, do transcription services. very fast at transcription, really fast at transcription. Once your transcription is done then, then you're ready to, you might want to sync it off to places like iTunes and stuff. So there's a site called Libsyn, and Libsyn is about $5 a month, and you can host all your podcasts in there, and that will synchronize to various providers such as iTunes. So definitely have a look at something like Libsyn. 
And last but not least, then you'll want to promote the podcast. I mean, you promote it. You could use something like Agora Pulse to promote it across all your different social media channels and get the message out about your podcast. So there's lots of different pieces of software available for your podcast. So they're definitely worth checking out. And I think some of the ones we shared here are pretty good, even if I say so myself. Hopefully you'll come back for the next show. I don't know what we're going to do yet, but it's going to be good, whatever it is. Uh, Hopefully you'll come back for the next show and uh, maybe subscribe to our newsletter or sign up as a fan. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.